Alright, what's going on, peoples? My FPV people, today we are going to go over the Runcam 5 HD. I think it's just called the Runcam 5 HD. Anyways, well, since GoPro doesn't make the Session 5 anymore, which I just loved this form factor. This, this honestly was like the best form factor for us folks with FPV drones and mini quads because it's just compact it's it doesn't take up a lot of space but for whatever reason gopro stopped making the session i don't know maybe us fpv guys just really ruined the whole best buy warranty thing i don't know but either way run cam is back now with their camera and now we're checking things out and remember here's the thing about this this is 99 dollars and it does 4k it also has a field of view of 145 degrees and they have something called x view x view is their version of Superview. They have an attempt at it, fellas. So let's go check this out. Basically built a dual session mount for my mini quad. So I've got this and the Session 5 stuck side by side. And uh, just to be completely transparent, this is a prototype unit. So this does have prototype firmware on there, which means things could change a little bit when it comes time to production. All right, so let's get into this. I'm gonna go ahead and, and show you kind of the side by side. I'll show you a couple of different angles and let's just jump straight into it. Now, when you first take a look at this, what you're gonna notice is this is the GoPro field of view and you can see that it's a lot wider. And if you take a look, you'll see the basketball hoop to the left. And if you look at that tree, it's rather skinny compared to the run cam view, which got a little bit of a smaller field of view. The basketball court has now disappeared and the tree has also gotten a little bit fatter with the run cam view. So let's go ahead and take off here. Uh, but right away, you're gonna see a lot more sky and a lot more ground with the GoPro. So up first, we've got the GoPro in full screen mode. And I mean, you know, pretty much what you'd expect. I, I wish it was a sunny day, but you know, the sun just kind of missed my memo. Now we're over to the run cam view. And as you can see, the quality has changed a little bit. It's, it's, uh, it's noticeable, but it's not, it's not really massive, but you can tell that the GoPro picture quality does have the edge when it comes to the run cam, when both cameras are in 1080. Now if you look at here, I did a freeze frame. On the GoPro, the car looks rather normal. And if you look at the house in the background, it looks normal. But on the run cam, that same car looks a little bit stretched and maybe even a little bit squished. And I think that is just run cam's attempt, you know, at making their X view a lot closer to GoPro's super view. And if you also notice the colors and the saturation um, and even contrast in the run cam is noticeably higher than the GoPro. The GoPro here, I would say by comparison, is just a little bit softer. Now the other thing to notice too is that this was shot in 60 frames per second for both and it is a rendered in 30 frames per second. And that's just because the run cam doesn't have a native 30 frames per second at uh, 1080. Now here's something interesting. When I check the video inspector in QuickTime, the GoPro shows 45.08 megabits of data versus the 30.13 in the run cam. And that's really where you're noticing a slight edge on the GoPro as far as picture quality goes. But again, for $99, that's not bad. Now let's go ahead and compare audio here. Now this one's kind of a no-brainer. The audio on the run cam is just not quite up to par from the GoPro. Not even close. The, the audio mic on the run cam sounds very hollow very shallow and really just doesn't have any depth in comparison to the GoPro. So the good news though is when you're doing FPV videos like this, I mean the, the sound quality isn't a huge factor as most people turn it down anyways and throw some music on top of it. 
So with the smaller field of view and more stretch on the run cam, I'm gonna say that gaps are probably gonna look more impressive on the GoPro because they're gonna look smaller. However, I don't think you're gonna notice unless you're doing a side-by-side -side comparison. So here's where things get real interesting. When you set the run cam into its 4K resolution mode, the data rate bumps up to 60.11 versus 60.07 on the GoPro. So they're virtually the same at this point, and now, when you're looking at the picture quality, they look pretty similar. I mean, the only difference at this point is that I know that the run cam's color, saturation, and sharpness settings are a little bit higher than the GoPro, but when you look at detail and how crisp the image is and the detail within the leaves and then the ground and the concrete, they're almost the same, and it's at the point now where it's just really hard to tell the difference between the two. Like again, the only reason why that I know the difference is because the run cam's settings are at default, which are a little bit more aggressive as far as color and saturation goes. But now, you can pretty much play with the run cam settings, and I'm willing to bet that you can get something very close to the GoPro. So we do a freeze frame here, and you do notice a little bit of, of difference when it comes to wide dynamic range. This is shot underneath the tree shade and the GoPro image seems to be just a teeny bit brighter than the run cam on the left. At this point, I'm, I'm quite impressed. So not bad, let's go ahead and finish off the rest of this flight. I'm gonna go ahead and go back and forth between full screen on the GoPro versus full screen on the run cam and you can see for yourself. All right, so where does that put us? Well, you've got the run cam and the Session 5, pretty much the same form factor. Now, the weight is actually something to talk about because the run cam comes in at about 56 grams, whereas the Session 5 was right around, I think, 76 grams. So that's almost 20 grams lighter for this guy, which for FPV drones is always a good thing. Battery life, now I haven't done a full-on test because I literally just got this guy, powered it up for like 30 minutes and did the swipe. The Session 5 shooting at like 2.7K will last me about 40-45 minutes worth uh, of flight. Uh, on paper, this is supposed to last about an hour shooting at 4K. So lighter and so far last longer shooting at a higher um, resolution. So far, so good. So for $99, this set to 4K, this is this is doable. I mean, for $99 compared to this, which was like, what about like 300 bucks last time uh, when they were still going for sale? I'd say that this is worth it. Now this doesn't come without its quirks, right? Um, it's only got one button and you can change between two modes uh, that you set, but that's probably my biggest gripe. So there's no Wi-Fi on here. And the only way to change the settings is you have to either connect this to a lap to your laptop and connect to an online app that Runcam has, which will generate a config file that lives on the SD card on here. Or you take the SD card out and you just open the file manually in some kind of editor like TextPad. And then you go on there and basically copy and paste and change things as if it were command line. So if you're used to the CLI in beta flight, it's a very similar thing. If you don't use any of that kind of stuff, you might be a little bit intimidated about how to do it, but it's not that difficult. And my guess is that, you know, if this does really well, Running Cam will work on an app to make configuration a lot easier. The other thing I want to point out is that this, unlike the Session 5, which has this door that you pop open, and that's how you get to both the USB as well as your SD card, on the Run Cam 5, you've got this sliding door right here, which I think is pretty neat. So, $99, set to 4K, and it's got a great bitrate. 
I'd say that's worth it. You know, there's one more thing I wanted to point out to you. I just, I just remember when I was looking at this. You can set this to 1440 and stretch it out to super view yourself in post in your editor. So that's something to consider. So once again, this is just prototype, prototype firmware. Things are probably gonna change when it comes out. But man, for $99, I'd rock it. Three of these for one of these. Granted, you can't buy these anymore. I'd rock it. Oh, one more thing. Jeez, I'm just keeping forgetting. You know what? Let me just let me just look to see. Make sure there's nothing else I want to tell you guys. Um, the glass on here is actually made out of Gorilla Glass, so it's something really, really strong. I'd probably still put some type of protective, you know, screen over it just because this isn't something that you can take out and replace. Unlike the GoPro, where you can take these screws off and change this glass if you do break this. All right, folks. Now that's it. All right. Hope you guys enjoy that one and. Um, you know, we'll see what happens once the once the production comes out. All right, man. I will. Uh, I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.